<clears throat> so I got into sales just like everybody else, I think, uh, most everybody else, and that I fell into it. Um, this was not something that I dreamed about as a six-year-old thing, like, I'm going to be a salesperson. Um, but I will say, you know, I'm the daughter of two entrepreneurs, um, seeing them both in their respective uh, roles. Um, my dad actually uh, went to the uh, the hotelier school in Lausanne um, and then was a hotelier his whole life. Um, but um, I think with that, you know, kind of watching them sell and watch them negotiate and delight clients and things like that was always something that was just kind of bred in me, plus the competitive nature of sales. Um, I was offered a job as an account manager. Um, I thought, sales, um, I don't know how you can write that word, but maybe. Um, and I actually turned the job down and they convinced me to take take it. I negotiated for a whopping $5,000 more salary and thought I was the most amazing negotiator on the planet back then um, and then took the job. But I think what, what I loved about it right? Was what changed my lens about what sales is, is that it's helping people. They're not talking to you and taking a call with you for their health or because they are bored. They are not. They are here with a challenge to solve and they want to understand how you can help them. And so that's what really lit my heart up about sales. I think greatest sales story. Um, I'll tell uh one, one of the, one of, I guess one of my favorites is the, the art of uh, using LinkedIn and relationships to get this deal done. So, and, and kind of executive presence. So real quick, um, I took over a team as a, as a leader. And when I took over that team, I said, let's think about um, what are the accounts that you guys are trying to get into that you haven't been able to crack. So one of my reports said it's a massive financial institution and a, a data analytics company called Morningstar, um, not the, not the fake meat company, but the financial institution. And she said, I've never been able to get in there. And so the first thing I did as a leader was look into the account to see, do I know anybody that works there? And I didn't, but I knew people who knew people that worked there. So I started to look and say, who do I know? And so I found that somebody in my network, a now comedian in LA, <clears throat> knew our key decision maker. They were connected to our key decision maker. And they were both from Chicago. And I was like, well, there's got to be a connection here. The rep said, <laughs> good luck. She said, we've been trying to get to this guy for two and a half years. He will not respond. He opens up our emails, no response. So I reached out to the person that I knew, the comedian, and I said, do you happen to know this gentleman? And he responded and said, I'm sitting in his cousin's kitchen having brunch right now. What's up? And I was like, we need him to take a meeting. The, not the cousin, but the actual person. We need him to take a meeting with us. Can you help us? So our friend reached out. The gentleman responded and said, these people have been after me forever. I have zero interest in changing job and changing providers for this. I will take a meeting with them for you if it'll get them off my back. And we're like, yes, all the yeses. We took the meeting. I was on it. My rep was, and she pulled, show me, you know me, tell me about yourself. Tell me what's going on. His response was my partner and I just, uh, just had, a, just adopted a baby and I'm trying to figure out how to navigate parenthood. They spoke the entire time about being parents tips, advice, thoughts like that. There was absolutely no discussion about work. And at the end of the call, he said, we haven't even talked about your platform. Let's have another call. She spent the entire 30 minutes building that relationship. It went to the next call and it ended up getting us in less than 12 months, a record breaking multi-year deal at that company. So thinking about this from a leadership perspective, how can you support your teams and dig in? If you're a first line leader, second line leader, I don't care who you are and what level you're at, think about what your top 10 tier one accounts are and get in the trenches with your people. That is our job. Second thing is to think about relationships matter. If she had gotten on that rep and just said, let me tell you about our platform for 30 minutes. You'd have been like, no interest in moving. Thanks for the time. Please don't email me again. But instead we invested in that person. And the first challenge that that person had wasn't work. It was how the hell do I manage to keep a newborn alive? <laughs> so I, I think that that's, that's it. Like even circle circling back to how to build better relationships, like just get, can I say, can I curse? Just give a shit about the people that you're selling to, right? Like take your own selfish ego and needs out of the way and just say like, what's going on in your world? How can I help you? And that'll make all the difference. You have no passion for this, obviously. <laughs> <laughs>